what's under this black box could cost you your life and a lot of ET. From the NMCA Flowmaster fastest streetcar shootout in Memphis, stay tuned for Inside Drag Race. When the temperatures plummet, the skies cloud up, fall moves into the air at Memphis Motorsports Park. It could mean only one thing. It's time for the NMCA World Finals coverage here on Inside Drag Racing. Right, thank you, Ken Stout. Coming up next, what are they hiding under this mysterious black box? Continuing on here in Memphis, Tennessee, that's the unmistakable look of a 1965 Chevrolet Impala that runs in NMCA Super Street category. It belongs to Chicago Lance Nick Scalvo. And believe me, there's a lot of talk about this car. We'll tell you why in just a minute. No, it's not the fact that the car weighs almost 4,000 pounds, uses a turbo 400 transmission, a specially fabricated rear end with a 410 final cog. That's not what they're talking about. It's not the 477 big block Chevrolet mill underneath the hood. It's all about that black box on top of the carburetor. Okay, Nick, the rules say one four-barrel carburetor. You've got a box over your carburetor. You won't let anybody see it. What's going on? Well, um, <clears throat> I've always been a creative person on interpretation of rules. They state in the rule book that you can have a four our, our class is for a single four-barrel. If you have electronically fuel, in uh, fuel injection systems, you can have four barrels. They never said how the four barrels had to be placed. What's under that box is the trick to the deal. Uh, our nitrous delivery system is the most creative uh, delivery system in the industry. So uh, all that stuff's secret. It's more than uh, you're more than welcome to buy it, but you ain't gonna be able to see it for free. So you're not even gonna let TV see under the box. Especially TV. Then everybody will be able to copy it on the East Coast. Us uh, Midwestern boys like to keep our stuff secret. Now the key word you said was buy it. You've got this whole car for sale. Why? Well, um, the only way I can compete in this class is to have a car that's we like to call a belly button. Everybody's got a Camaro or a Firebird or a Corvette. And if I really, truly want to win the class, or if I want to dominate, I have to build one of those cars. The rules, the way they're written, it's really hard to compete in a 4,000-pound car. I mean, I may win the hearts, and, uh, you know, everybody pats me on the back and says, you did a good job, but good jobs don't go so far when you lose a Chuck Samuels second round. All right, the big question, how much? Uh, make me an offer. You know, for a lead sled, street is neat. This is the latest state-of-the-art trick Nick Scabo has here. Let me show you something. He can change out this entire big block engine in just 20 minutes. See the little clamp that releases the electronically controlled fan that hooks to the radiator? That's so he can make that fast engine swap. And notice the gray cord coming out of the car hooked to a laptop computer. That's right. He can reprogram the ECU between each run for maximum performance. We'll be back with more really neat street machines right now, though. Let's take a break for Butch McCall and his quarter mile quiz. Now, when we come back, a class called Super Street. You'll like these. Stick around. Welcome back to Memphis, Tennessee, as the sun sinks slowly over the Mississippi River. In the west, you're watching the National Muscle Car Shootout, the NMCA World Finals. Ted Jones, Marvin Noel, Ken Stout, and Brett Kepner here bringing you the action. And this car belongs to Nick Scavo from Chicago, Illinois. Has a nickname, Marvin. Yes, sir, and that car is called Orca. As you can well see, 4,200 pounds of it. I can see why. It's a big baby. His opponent will be Chuck Samuel. 477 inches in Orca. Chuck Samuel running a big small block of 414 inches. Chuck Samuel going to carry this one all the way. He is out front, but look at Orca trying to run him down. Chuck Samuel. Samuel and 817, and that's a small block? Yes. That's incredible. Well, thank goodness BF Goodrich is a sponsor of this tour. There was plenty of rubber left for the road trip to Lansing, Michigan. 200 miles across America's heartland. Cruising into Lansing, I rode in what had to be the quickest car on the tour, Nick Scavo's Impala Super Streeter. Nick had bolted in a tamer engine than his racer, but used the same competition fuel injection system with the help of an onboard computer. And you can take the fuel injection and tailor the fuel injection to what the engine likes. And the only way you'll ever know what the engine likes is by changing it while it's driving. I mean, for instance, right now, we're driving along, I look at my autometer tag and it says 1500 RPM. When I'm driving along at 1500 RPM, on the screen, there's this box that says 1500 RPM. If I push the equal sign and enter a different pulse width in, let's say uh, 3.2, enter, the car runs fatter and, and, and just starts chugging. All I have to do is, like, to change that is push equal sign again and push 2.8 in it, enter, and instantly the car seems to run smoother. 
The Mickey Thompson Eliminator, known as Super Street, was still the most popular of this drag race. The 10-inch tire cars are easily taking the country by storm. But the man of the weekend here, Chuck Samuels, in his 92 Chevy Camaro, the fuel-injected machine that had earlier gone as quick as 8.06. This time around, Samuels in the world's quickest car had his problems off the starting line and spun the tires, but not as big a problem as the man in the far lane. Nick Scavo's incredible 1965 Impala smacks the wall after trying to save his errant machine right in front of our own Steve Grye, the ESPN cameraman who caught the action only a few feet away. Oh, 